What's going on, you loyal listeners? Thank you for tuning in to the L Squared Podcast. I'm your host here, Luke Larson. And joining me today, as per the huge, my lovely and loquacious co-host, Old Legs. How are we doing? Good to have you back. But we also have a very special, lovely and loquacious special guest. Writer, director, producer of the new film, Sugar Blasters, showing at the South Dakota Film Festival right now. Sean Skinner, thank you so much for coming on the show. That might be the first time I'm I was I, I was categorized as loquacious, but thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> glad to be here. I think it just means talkative. We haven't really done all the research, but the important thing is that it's a big word that starts with an L. So yes. perfect. Perfect. Luke, so, the if I get enough caffeine here. in me, I'll be I'll be as loquacious as you need me to be. <laughs> well, perfect. So uh, we watched your film, Sugar Blasters, at the festival, and it's so good. It's oh, so you. much fun. And <laughs> could, could you kind of bring the, the listeners in and kind of give us a synopsis of what the film's about? Yeah, I'll, I'll start you off with just the synopsis of it. It's, it's, the, uh, it's the inside look at the seedy world of kids' serial commercial productions, based in 1981. Uh, it, it was it was literally the the spawning of me going down a rabbit hole on YouTube one I don't know some afternoon and I'm just looking at old serial commercials I don't know why I, I think I might have even seen like first it was like G.I. Joe's I'm watching yeah. toy ads and then it's Transformers and then it's Cabbage Patch and then all of a sudden hey follow this one up with you know old serial commercials and I just started watching all these ones that I used to watch as a kid you know, Saturday mornings after school, in the mornings before school, like you, they bombarded us with Mm -hmm. sugar and plastic. Like that's all they wanted us to be when we were, you know, kids growing up in the eighties. Yeah. So I, I then took the link from YouTube, went right to Twitter, had to, you know, pop off and be like, Hey, guess where I've been for the last hour and a half. And I throw the link (laughs) up there and a couple of buddies of mine just start chirping back at me and they're like, Oh my God. Can you imagine what that set was like? You know, this kid, what, what a diva. And you know, you know, that mom was a terror. She was, you know, and the director was probably coked out of his head. You know, it was just all this that like we stopped and like on Twitter, I could, I could see it. You, you can't normally see it, but we yeah. stopped tweeting. And one of us just said, we should probably take this private. And then we got off there <laughs> and created a thread and we just continued from there. Um, Justin Caesar and, and Jeremy Nordine and I just kind of mm. molded this whole thing. And we weren't sure where we were going to take it first. Um, but we knew we wanted to put something together as a period piece because that's, you know, like I said, we were bombarded with sugar and plastic as kids in the 80s. Wow. That's yeah, amazing. I, I will say that you you did this to me. I, I after watching it, I went down the YouTube rabbit hole and uh, thank God for the algorithm. I, I had the exact same experience. You just like boom, 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 one after another, and I'm like, like it's kind of crazy where you watch some of these and you're like, was that a parody or is that like actually a commercial? Because exactly. I can't tell with some of them. Like, well, so. and then you think about like what what we bring to the to the table is what was that set like yes how many how many of those adults were smoking on set like oh yeah we're really now we didn't use real cigarettes on our on our film we we those are props uh-huh. we, we actually we made some out of green tea so we packed them ourselves um but most of them were um uh what is it just natural ones that they use in tv and film um which took us forever to find uh, but that that studio smelled like green tea like you wouldn't believe <laughs> it was crazy um but yeah i mean just just that rabbit hole is so easy to fall down and then you know what you know who how many people were on the set okay how many how many different interactions are we going to have in this short film we originally did the film for this festival here in minneapolis called z fest uh south dakota polls oh a good handful of z fest films every year because the quality is just amazing like we have this this festival where and it's really a film competition it's not necessarily a festival but you get seven minutes to make any film you want and so after our little twitter you know interaction when we kind of started hashing out our pieces we're like we can do this in seven minutes can't we 
and you see what we came up with. Wow. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's incredible. I, uh, I was, as I was watching this, I didn't know. So you kind of already answered the question is that you had this kind of uh, singular experience where you went down the, the YouTube rabbit hole. But was there any like sort of commercials that stood out to you like growing up as a child that, that kind of like, ding back into your head as, as you went through this or that were sort of you wanted to pull back into this project or I mean there's a if, if you've seen the trailer to the we did do a trailer and it was the actual commercial with the boy actor that okay if you, mm -hmm. if you see the film you know there's there's a boy actor but yep. there's there's a there's kind of a twist at the end of the actual Sugar Blasters film we created an actual trailer, perfect 30 second serial commercial of what the original commercial was supposed to be. And that was our trailer. Mm -hmm. um, and that just looks like every 80s, probably yep. late 70s, you know, bad mm -hmm. sets, bad green screen, uh, uh, an interesting um, puppet or, or mascot for the film. And it's just one of those things where, okay, we try to throw as much of that in the, in the trailer and then we brought it around at the end with the little mm -hmm. twist because of the uh, requests by the, the <laughs> people from the cereal company. Um, I don't want to give anything away unless you guys have already talked about it, but um, it changes. It kind of, you know, there's, there's additions and subtractions and, and amendments to all productions, but this one flips it on its head. And so, yeah, we wanted it to be as cheesy as dank as smoky as you know 70s and 80s you know kind of I don't know it was a grungy not really but it was <laughs> it was it was definitely had more of a earthy a molly uh, analog feel how about oh, that that's a that's, good word that's, I yeah. guess that's the word I should use yeah. <laughs> loquacious indeed <laughs> and, and speaking of that though like Jordan old legs and I were talking about this before and smoking is just so cool right isn't it cool hot take, hot take. <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I saw it like you open with it pretty much and I'm just like god dang like every time I just I I fall back into this thing where you know it's like if you bought a pack of cigarettes you could just like you could become Don Draper like season four of Mad Men where you're just, you're just smoking and just coming up with ideas and you're you got all like the holds down different you know yeah. and I, I I appreciate that on set they're like oh they you know they really we well we let them all like choose their their style right like yep. everybody yep. just kind of did it their own way um there's a couple of happy accidents in this the very first shot after the title the title shot Right. Um, mm -hmm. you see a producer walking into frame and he lights his, his lighter and, you know, sparks the cigarette and you see a, you see a light getting lit in the background at the exact same time. And it's just like this, this cue, which we didn't plan it. It just kind of <laughs> happened. It was just kind of good timing. Uh, he lights that the light hits at the same time, which really kind of shines on his face. And then he exhales and you get this huge puff of smoke. <laughs> like, it was just like this happy accident. We were, wow. we were super thrilled with it. I mean, did you get, you guys know that this was a one take, right? I, I, I didn't know. I had no oh, idea. Yeah, yeah. This, okay. So this was a, that was, that was part of our pre-production. We were, we were thinking, do we, can we do this in one take with this many actors and actresses in the studio? Um, the, the set made it easier for us to try it and see if we could pull it off. Uh, but we, our backup was to pull some sort of Birdman type thing where we have mm -hmm. actual um, things crossing in front of the, the shot that we can do edits on. And our editor, who is also our DP, was like, there's no way in hell we're pulling off a Birdman with this thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah, you guys were like, oh, it's every, people make a Birdman every day. It's so proud. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> like, ah, 1917, together. like, it, right. we got this down. By <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So we basically said, let's get everybody really fired up and get them all excited about it. And let's get it in one take. Hmm. And so the only place you don't see the one take is the very opening sequence with the mom and the kid. Like those are four cuts. And then the second we turn to them walk in and we go to our title screen, it's all one take. There's not one edit in the rest of that film. 
Wow. How does, so how does that, is that sort of, do you come as far as like, it's interesting that you decided to, to go with like a one take style. Are you, do you have more experience with like, I don't know, like even like, like more show production or like stage type things or I'm, I'm, I'm interested to like, I'm, I'm actually interested how that even works like on the day of the shooting like do you have like separate people sort of practicing this one thing and they go over and do this or like the the way you set that up i guess is, is so, really curious for me yeah that's a good question what we decided was uh we're going to rehearse the day before and not a week before not you know multiple sure. days before it was we rehearsed the day before so that everybody will remember their moves mm -hmm. and when we got there that day it was either going to be Birdman or one take like those were our choices <laughs> yep and when we when we saw the space and we realized the people and how much room we had to move, move with we're like it's one take we're just going to walk through it uh -huh. and we proceeded to walk this walk the shot right and we had to do it multiple times like figure out okay this way camera's going to move this way you know and we had to block everything out um it probably took us a good, I mean, two hours. We're, we're, we're dealing with like 17 actors leading and speaking and background. Um, and so with one camera, it wasn't a multi-cam shoot. There were no tricks. It was just one continuous shot. And, you know, everybody had to have their lines down and they had to all be fake smoking at the same time. And they yeah. all had to, you know, have that 70s vibe. And, um, you know, so we walked it after we, we planned it out and then we walked it with everybody. And then we started putting people in their places and marking everything. And I mean, it was a, it was a day of, Oh boy. It was probably six or eight hours that first day of rehearsal. And we, you know, we walked through it 30 times. And once we thought we had it, we let everybody rest. We fed them. We said, let's go home. Let's do this tomorrow. And we came back and did it 17 times. And the 17th time was the, was the one we kept. That was the one. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So it is. It's it's a dance, if that makes sense. Like sure. it's the same steps, and once you get those repeated, and you get the muscle memory, and you realize, oh yeah, that's right. He's going there, and my cue is now to go here. It was just it, it at that point it felt like a stage production, sure. um, mm -hmm. which I have zero experience with. Um, Interesting. Yeah. A few years ago, I did um, I did do a short film that played South Dakota. It was called help desk and that was also a one take and that was with like 19 um 19 actors and we were in an office uh, indoor controlled space and that was a seven minute piece um which was also very well choreographed and we had some amazing actors which were also in this piece and so they were they had a little bit of experience of how we put that together sure so is that yeah. going to be like your thing now? Like I only do one take. Oh God, no. that's it. <laughs> no way. <laughs> no, and I'm, I, I've done two, two one take short films. Um, oh man, just to imagine what that's like for a feature. Mm. It's, I, I don't, I, I don't even have the words um, <laughs> or, or patience. I'm sure uh, it, I like doing them when I feel like we can, can really, micro it and control it like micromanage it and control it um but you can't you can't overcomplicate it right so this one if you go back and watch you realize it's about a 10 foot radius circle that that camera moves and that's about it sure. and you'll be floored to think that knowing that you've already watched it and you didn't even realize it was a one take mm. yeah yeah, yeah that, i'm really that proud makes of sense it. that makes sense that you if you can confine it into this little closed mm -hmm. system you can kind of set the parameters more uh that's really interesting i i'm curious again this this film brought back just kind of like those those memories of just flipping even even like flipping through channels we kind of miss that as far as even seeing ads in television yeah. uh um i think it's really do you think that I mean, obviously you guys are kind of pulled, drawn to this project. You wanted to really do this. Do you think that we miss out or that this generation is maybe not seeing it? Not that ads are terribly great, but um, I, 
I could just see like a whole generation of kids that don't even like all they know is Netflix, you know, like they, right. you know, maybe they don't even have a cable box and they don't see they, stuff like this. They don't, they don't have the luxury that we had who had jingles. I missed a good jingle, right? Like yeah. it, it, it's stuck in your oh. head and it, you hear that little, even a tone and all of a sudden you're like, by Menon, like, you, or, or some people go, mm-hmm. Costanza, like, that, that was the thought, right? The whole yeah. Costanza thing was actually because those jingles worked, yeah. right? Tony the Tiger, they're great. Well, yep. right? So we, we threw that little catchphrase, take a blast in the mouth. Um, <laughs> um, because, you know, you have, if you have a pitched man or a, or a character, like they did in the 60s and 70s and 80s, and some into the 90s, um, they also had a catchphrase and they had a little song and they had a little, you know, a tone that you always associated with that product. And you're right. Like kids nowadays, this generation, this younger generation watching Netflix doesn't get any of that. Like you don't know the Oscar Mayer Wiener song, you know, you don't, you don't know. Oh boy. I mean, think about who, what was a, what was another big one that, that like you just couldn't get out of your head. Oh, I was, I was immediately thinking of like the Kool-Aid man just blasting oh. through the wall. Right. And, oh, oh yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> just, and he had a catchphrase, right? Yeah. Right. Just, yeah. just committing crimes. <laughs> <laughs> but rough the crime dog. That's not even a product. It's like a, <laughs> yeah. you know, give a hoot, don't pollute. How many licks does it take to get to the center of a tootsie? But like, you've got all those things that like, they just bombarded us with as kids. And you know, it was just a bunch of stuff that we were throwing off the wall and it was all sticking. It was yeah. all working. And so we were like, what if we did this? What if we threw in that? Okay, we got to have a puppet, right? Yeah. We got to have a crazy person running the puppet. All right, <laughs> is the puppet smoking? Like, we just had all this stuff that we were throwing together um, and it was just working and it was just nostalgia. You know, it was yeah. just that that takes you back to a more analog time. I've, I'm using it again, but it, it, I, think it, I think it fits. Um, and it just, it, it felt a little more innocent, even though they were all like horrible people, you know, they're all yeah. snug it away. The director's doing coke off a key, you know, I mean, there's kids on the set, they're swearing, oh, like, yeah. swearing, <laughs> the kid's a little brat. I think your, I think your kid, he was, uh, he, he goes on to, uh, he goes on to be starring in stand by me right he's like the cory feldman he's got the glasses and absolutely everything. like yep. <laughs> that, that was his next stop that was that you know, was that was launching pad Corey he locked he did lost boys yep did, yep you know yep. uh what is it <laughs> what's the drive one uh oh oh what's it with the other cory oh i forget it the mercedes oh, one. Oh, the girl named mercedes oh now i'm, I'm just kicking myself now license to drive there oh. you go God, man, Corey. Yeah. <laughs> so, but then Corey Feldman goes on to be best friends with Michael Jackson. It gets weird, you know. That's yeah, whole, yeah, whole yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, outside your jurisdiction, you're just yeah. here to film a, a serial commercial, right? <laughs> yep. So, yep. Yeah, yeah. And if, and if and if we scar that kid for life, and he goes on to be Corey Feldman, that's more power. We can than blame him. his parents, right? Yeah. yeah. And speaking of which, <laughs> that actor was my son. So there you go. Hey, hey. comes full circle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So you knew you're like, I, I, we need a kid who can really pull off being a little brat, who doesn't listen, doesn't. I know the perfect one. I, I know yep. just the guy. <laughs> <laughs> so he started in a few other films for Z Fest in the past. He won Best Actor a few years ago, uh, Best Child Actor. Um, and I was, and I always ask him first. I'm like, Hey, I got a kid role. You want it? And he looked up from his phone for a second. He's like, Sure. And I said, I didn't even tell him what he got to do or you know say or whatever. And he's like, Count me in. Wow. easy as that <laughs> and the girl at the end is my daughter too so i mean it was a whole family Dang. thing yeah like i like it yeah but you know talking about you know the the nice phrase kids nowadays you know i think of those youtube ads that you know you can skip after five seconds and that now they make them so that they only last five seconds right and you don't even really know what's going on but i i also think i mean maybe the maybe this generation's better off with not having their brains programmed by these crazy weird things that like the fact that that they were able to nestle these so far into our minds maybe it's better oh nestle's was a good commercial too by the way good good tie in there 
Nestle's, <laughs> Nestle's, Nestle, Nestle. Nestle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Boom. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, you know, they're not um, – we were being sold to constantly. Like, if you remember being a kid, everything we were being sold to constantly. If it wasn't clothes or food or cars or whatever, bikes, toys, I mean, they were always throwing stuff at us. Video games, holy crap, video games. Mm. They were throwing everything at us so that we get our parents to buy, you know, new stuff. And we would get those songs and those images and everything stuck in our heads. Some of us go on to be creative types because of it. Others mock it uh, and others completely hate it. I know some people who are very much against that, that capitalist stuff, but <laughs> it's, it's, it's part of Americana, right? So it's, it's, a, it's a form of art. It's a form of culture. Uh, yeah, they're pandering and they're, they're trying to get us to spend money so that they can sell products, but um, it's different. It's so different now. You're right. It's whether or not this, this generation is better off without having it. I mean, it is about choice. It is about you being able to make a decision based on something you need versus you want, um, you know, and who knows if there's some sort of assistance that it gave those of us who live through it to be able to make better decisions. Who knows? Netflix, that's your only choice, right? You don't have, <laughs> you pick your show. You yeah. pick, you know, based on recommendation. Right. Um, I don't know. I, I, I'm definitely doing a deep dive on that one. I don't, I don't know if it's, it's I mean, like whatever, or not. if, if they have any benefits from not having these commercials rammed in their head, it, it offsets it because they've had so much more screen time that yeah. in their lives. So that's going to be more harmful in the I end. Agree. Too, who, knows? I mean, who knows? Uh, yeah. I mean, and, and again, they're not being bombarded with stuff that they don't need or things yeah. that are bad for them. Um, I mean, some of the programming on Netflix isn't the greatest, but you know, that's, <laughs> who am I? I mean, it's all subjective, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, I will say that I, I do sort of miss the, just the overall TV experience. I find myself like if I'm, if I'm in like a hotel room and you just kind of that natural thing where you just kick back, you turn on the TV and you just start flipping through channels. Yeah. And it's that, you almost miss out on that experience, especially if you don't have TV at home, which I don't. Um, I'm absolutely in the demographic that has cut the cord and whatnot, but it, it, that kind of finding a diamond in the rough where you're just like, oh, this is on, or it's right. like, sweet, you know, here we go. Like, let's just like fire into a movie that's, you know, 30 minutes in. Right. You know, it's like Con Air's on. It, Luke's got his, you know, I'm like, ready here we to go. go. Nick Cage, right like now. 30 minutes in, but I'm already like, I'm ready. <laughs> I did that exact thing yesterday with Tango and Cash. Like I was, oh. I was just, I was watching, I think I was watching the twins playing the Cubs last night and, I, and I'm just flipping on a, on a commercial break and I Tango and Cash in the first prison scene where they're being led into the maximum security prison. And I'm like, Oh, now I'm invested. Yep. Yeah, took me two minutes. That's it. I, that's it. <laughs> and I was like, I was in, you know, I was just completely yeah. locked in. Yeah. But yeah, there's, I mean, I, I feel like there should be a channel out there or a couple channels that just play old programming, um, old programming from bell to bell, right? So the, the Friday night block from CBS from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. used to be Dukes of Hazard, Dallas dynasty you know which used to be crazy you know but i, I i'm dating myself here a little bit <laughs> but then like you look at the abc and it's like three's company and it's happy days and it's all, like they can take all that and leave the commercials in and just play that for three hours people would just be sucked into like three or four hour blocks of that stuff and i yeah. think it's just a uh it's just that kind of wishing for the stuff you had when you were a kid or just that feeling you had when, when you were that certain age, right? It's that nostalgia of a different time because 2020 is a, Oh God. It's, yeah. it's an interesting time. Every it's day sure. I wake up and it's like, all right, what are we doing today? <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't stop. Yep. And it's hard to just like catch your breath. Right. So to go back and know like, Hey, I used to be able to breathe back this time at this time. Uh, 
let's sit there for three hours. I mean, and you could probably do that on YouTube. That's part of the rabbit hole, right? Yeah, um, right. But it would be cool if there was a streaming service or, or somebody who could pull that off. But, you know, now with however, you know, how those are all owned, uh, getting the rights to all that stuff might be really yeah. probably a problem. <laughs> you just uh, create Boomerang? The, the yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> Man, Am I, I missing some? Is it, does it exist? <laughs> well, there is a network called Boomerang that plays. It plays like old cartoons and stuff from. Really? Like, but I love when does I. Does it had, play the commercials? No, it doesn't. It doesn't play the actual commercials. That's yeah, yeah. how we get them. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> See, we're different. Yeah. All yeah. right. A lot of people in. Yeah. If you could direct a commercial for one thing, it could be a product from your <laughs> youth. What would you pick? Oh wow, that's a great question. Um. Oh boy. If I could direct one of the commercials for, for mm-hmm. one of those, probably a live action uh, and, and Jordan mentioned this earlier, a live action Kool-Aid commercial, mm-hmm. not, not animated. No, I want, I want that yep. dude going through a brick wall. Yeah. Right. I like it. Like a, like a <laughs> bad family guy episode, but like right there, live action. Um, you know, there's, there's so many great products or well, mm-hmm. I thought they were great, but <laughs> you know, oh boy, I where to start? Like GI Joe and Transformers had interesting oh, yeah. commercials. Um, I always wanted to recreate whatever they were doing. If you actually got the toy, I always for like one of the first times I played with it, I just wanted to like get my setup and just do it at least one time the way that I saw it in the commercial. And right. just be like, all right, I just got to know that I'm doing this. And then now, like, okay, now I can do whatever else I was doing. My parents are still under the impression that I'm waiting for Christmas morning to get the USS flag uh, aircraft carrier from G.I. Joe. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes. seven and a half foot long aircraft carrier. Still yes. waiting. 45 years I've been waiting. And my, you know, mom and dad, they just, they know how to use the internet. Choice. They, can, they yeah. can find it. Yeah. Yeah. But, so, yeah. yeah. I, no, I, I love it. I'm already picturing the live action, just like a like John Cop- Carpenter esque like body oh horror Kool Aid <laughs> Man just exploding through the Absolutely. wall, just oh, yeah. screaming at kids. To <laughs> <laughs> well, and then I'd probably uh, go incredible. a little. I'd go one step further and probably have something bust out of the Kool Aid Man. Yes, yeah, you know, it's kind of meta, you know, yep. and just go and have yeah. he come through. Oh yeah, and then all of a sudden. It's, <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe it's uh you know kind of like uh something out of uh what was i gonna say robocop or, or you know mm, uh, yeah just like just total so recall splat packs just right right yeah he's like one big splat pack it's always true, right? <laughs> yeah. you know i think i'm this i feel like i would want to do a lucky charms commercial because like he just it seems like they always he's a little bit mischievous but he's not evil and this podcast we did our infamous leprechaun episode where we did a two and a half hour episode going over each of the leprechaun movies in the film franchise (laughs) so i feel like there's a tie-in there that you know one of the worst (laughs) episodes one of the worst podcast episodes we ever made but I, we do have the title of Leprechaun uh, Completionist. Yeah, I mean, so. who, how many other people in the world can say that they've seen all eight movies, let alone I in one week? I feel like an authority on the issue, and I can't remember <laughs> more than three or four things about any of the films. I didn't realize there were eight of them. That's what we said. Uh, wow. Yeah, yeah, we were like, let's do for it was for St. Patrick's Day. We're like, let's do one more. We'll talk about the Leprechaun movies. There's got to be like four max, right? And it was like, oh, there's another one. Eight. Oh, another one. And they Eight of them. Making them. Somebody kept greenlighting those movies. I mean, I, uh, yeah. Like, how? Well, that means I'll. There's hope for me then <laughs> <laughs> to get a feature made. Yeah. <laughs> That's the case. Yeah. Well, we're we're excited to see that. So, where can where can the people find you to to see when you finally get your Leprechaun Nine movie green? Yep. Oh yeah, Leprechaun Nine. <laughs> Let's start it up. <laughs> Uh, red23films.com is where you can find me and information about projects we've got working on uh, we're working on uh, in the middle of two documentaries right now that I'm trying to finish up um, one on a former 
movie theater, movie house that was really a beautiful, large uh, facility that a uh, local town kind of let run down. And then a big owner from out of state came in and just let it sit there for 20 years. And there was this huge fight where the city tried to save it and they, they couldn't get it done. And now there's a high V grocery store in its place. And a lot of people are missing. <laughs> yeah, I know it's sad. Um, and then another one we're doing is, um, which I'm really excited about, uh, you know, being from Minnesota, Bob Dylan's a big thing around here. Mm -hmm. And we are doing a doc on, uh, in, in early seventies, he created, uh, this album called blood on the tracks and he started the record in New York city and he didn't like how it was turning out. So he called his brother back here in Minneapolis and he said, get me a studio, get me some guys. I want to redo this. And they re-recorded it in two days. And those guys are all the musicians on the album, but he had a deal already with the record company and all the leather, all the LP jackets and record jackets and were already printed out with the New York musicians on it. And it stayed that way for 40 years. And we're doing a documentary on the six musicians who are here in Minneapolis, who are the true musicians on Blood on the Tracks. And we interviewed all of them in studios wow. and we traveled around the country to interview these guys. And oh man, great guys, by the way. Uh, and they finally got their credit in 2018. And, you know, uh, we, we were working on post on this thing and then COVID hit and mm, yeah. things just kind of are up in the air, but we're working on them slowly and we're looking Which to get them done. Do. And that yeah. one's coming out soon, uh, hopefully 2021. Um, that sounds great. Wow. Yeah, very, we're very excited about that. That one's a big one. Like that's, that's a get, that's, that's uh, a story that nobody's got on, on film. And we're really excited to have what we have. And we don't have Mr. Dylan's blessing yet, but we're working on it. So mm -hmm. get a little music in there that, you know, he actually sang instead of Muzak. Yep. Yep. Right. So that's what we're doing. And that's Red 23 Films. We're, we're working on those things. And you can find us at our website or on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook. They, are, they all exist. It's Red 23. It has nothing to do with Michael Jordan. Everyone thinks it does. <laughs> it, was a, it was a lucky casino run in Vegas uh, about 15 years ago. And that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, loyal listeners, go out and watch Sugar Blasters right now at SouthDakotaFilmFest.org slash VOD all the way until the 26th. So we got five days left. Go see it. It's a great, super fun, coked up uh, commercial. We had a blast with it, and we had a blast talking to you. So thank you so much for coming on, Sean. Um, Thanks, guys, for having me on. I appreciate it. Absolutely. And thank as you. always, pleasure with ours. Yes. And as always, you can find me on Twitter at Luke Larson 89. Find this podcast at L Squared Podcast on Twitter, on Instagram. You can find us on Facebook at L2 Podcast. Let us know what you thought about Sugar Blasters, and until next time.